What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an amazing day. It's cooled off a little bit here. A little chilly this morning, but we're going to make it. Getting up to about, I think, 50, 55 today. So warming up a little bit this afternoon. Today we need to do a little fertilization on our seedlings that have sprouted in the greenhouse here. I want to share with you some new information that I've recently gotten and I've read about fertilizers for seedlings. And then later on in the video, we need to move our girls. They have finished grazing that plot of clover, so we need to put them on a new plot so they can start grazing something else. So let's go in the greenhouse here where it's nice and cozy, and then I'll tell you about the results of that study I recently read. Now before we dig deeper into this, let me give this disclaimer because I'm undoubtedly going to catch some flack in the comments for this. It's all right if I do, I can take it, bring it on. But I want to kind of give this disclaimer before we get deeper into this discussion. So after I tell you what I'm about to tell you, a lot of you are going to be thinking, well, Travis, what's up, man? You've been telling us for years that 2020 is the best stuff since sliced bread, that you use it on everything, that it works great. And there's no doubt that this stuff right here will give your plants a quick, immediate boost like nothing else. But is it the best long-term solution? for your plants. So here's the deal. Although some of you really want to make me kind of stick to my guns of what I've said in the past, I am entitled to change my mind. If I obtain new information and I believe that information is valid, I am entitled to change my mind. If I obtain new information and that information is valid and I don't change my mind, that makes me quite stubborn. So, as we learn new things, we're entitled to change our mind. We're entitled to kind of evolve our practices based on new information we obtain. I encourage every gardener to do that. Research, learn for yourself, try new things, see what works for you. So what we're going to be talking about here is using something like this, this AgriThrive General Purpose Fertilizer versus something like this on your seedlings. And as we talk about some of the results of this study, I'll try to put some of the images on the screen right here. So this particular study was done at a place called Head Start Nursery in Santa Clara County, California. And the study was done by the University of California, Santa Cruz. And it was done specifically on cauliflower transplants. So this nursery in the past had used a fertilizer with an analysis of 6 24 24 on all their vegetable transplants. Now 62424 is obviously a little bit different than something like 202020 as far as the nitrogen percentage goes, but the phosphorus and the potassium is pretty close. So what they did is they took some cauliflower seedlings, they started them all in the same growing medium whatever this Head Start nursery usually used for all their vegetable transplants. They fertilized some with a 62424 that they always use and then they fertilized some with this AgriThrive general purpose here. And when those transplants were six weeks old, the university took some scanning electron micrograph images. And for those of you that don't know what that means, that's just like a really expensive microscope. So they took some really detailed microscopic images of the roots and other parts of the plants to really be able to compare the differences between using a conventional fertilizer and using this stuff. Because although the plants may kind of look the same, when you get down to kind of the microscopic details, you can really see some differences between using a synthetic fertilizer and using an organic fertilizer. So the first image we'll put on the screen here shows the root hair density difference between using the AgriThrive and the 62424. So what they did was they took one of the roots, took the scanning electron micrograph image of it, and with the AgriThrive you can see you have lots more root hairs there than you do with using the synthetic fertilizer. And what does this mean? Well, it means that you've got a lot more surface area there for absorption of water, nutrients, all kind of things. So the plants can uptake a lot more from the soils because they have so many more root hairs than if you use that synthetic fertilizer. And the second image here shows the differences in microbial activity on the surface of the roots. So with the AgriThrive, you can see a lot more microbes there. The microbes are the little peel-shaped things there that you see. A lot more microbial activity using the AgriThrive than using the synthetic fertilizer. What does this mean? Well, it means 
if you have more microbes you're going to have better nutrient conversion it's going to make a healthier more resilient plant and then the last image right here shows the differences in microbial activity inside the phloem tissue now those of you that may not be familiar with what phloem is inside a plant you've got two main vascular tissues it's kind of like arteries and veins in our bodies so the xylem takes water and minerals and nutrients from the roots to the plant leaves the plant leaves then use that stuff to photosynthesize produce sugars and those sugars are then transported back down to the roots via the phloem so the xylem is kind of like the veins in our body and the phloem is kind of like the arteries in our body so as you see in the picture here when using the agrothrive you've got a lot more microbial activity inside those phloem cells there when you're using the synthetic fertilizer it's pretty bare there's not much biology there so in the synthetic fertilizer example you just basically got what that plant is making traveling via the phloem back down to the roots with the agrothrive example you've got what that plant is making plus all these beneficial microbes that are going down to the roots that will help protect the plant and help it absorb nutrients better now for some of you this may not be new information at all for some of you this may be pretty enlightening but it's pretty intuitive it makes sense right so when we feed our plants with this stuff here that has lots of microbes and biology in it those are then transferred to the plant they can benefit the plant when we feed them with synthetic stuff yes the plant grows but it really doesn't have a lot of extra stuff on there's not a lot of biology there to really protect the plant now as i mentioned earlier there's no doubt that this stuff right here works i've used a lot of it over the years i know that it works I've also used the terrible analogy before that this stuff was like crack for your plants. We'll try to get away from that analogy and use something maybe a little bit better here. So let's say, for example, I'm working out here in the garden one day, it's hot. I'm, you know, feeling a little drained. I need some energy. And I run up to the dollar store there and I get me a pack of Reese cups. Now, Reese cups are kind of my weakness. I love them but i eat me a couple Reese cups there that's going to give me some energy pretty fast but it's not going to last very long and pretty soon after that i'm going to be hungry again and i'm going to need something else to eat but if instead of eating those Reese cups i took the time to eat something healthy i'm going to have a lot more sustained long-term energy and i'm not going to be hungry again in an hour or so so this stuff here is kind of like the Reese cups. The plants really like it. It tastes really good to them. And they're going to grow as a result. But they're going to need more of it. And they kind of get dependent on it. Whereas if we give them something healthy here, it's going to be better for them in the long term. Now that's not to say I will never ever use this stuff again. You can see I still have some. It's not like I've thrown away what I've got. I still have some. I still will use it as a rescue fertilizer if i have to if something looks really really bad and i need a quick turnaround i can utilize this this does work a little faster than this stuff although this stuff is pretty fast for an organic fertilizer so no i'm not throwing all my 2020 20 away i have some if i need it but we're going to try to stick with this stuff right here because it's going to benefit the health of our plants more long term and if you want to try this stuff, you're watching on YouTube, we've got a link in the description below there. Make sure you use the code LAZYDOGFARM to get 10% off your order. They've got it in several different quantities, little bottles for you small gardeners, or bigger jugs for us who have a decent sized garden. So we told you about why we're using this stuff. Now let's feed these seedlings here. Now these tomatoes already have their second set of leaves or true leaves, so they're ready. Some of these peppers don't quite have true leaves yet but since this stuff this agrotive is not very hot will be just fine we're not going to put a bunch of it in our little sprayer we'll just kind of put a light dose since all these things are small but we want to go ahead and start feeding them and start kind of help promoting all that microbial activity on those roots like we saw on those images there so i've got my little dollar store one liter sprayer here which i really like and we're not going to put a lot in here like i said we're just going to put a few little glugs of this general purpose in here let me turn it to the side there so i don't spill it everywhere just put a little bit in here i'm not going to measure it come on there we go that should be plenty to start off with 
and as these things grow a little bit we can up our dose a little bit and maybe put you know two times that much in there but i think this would be a good amount to start with put our lid back on give it a little bit of agitation there and since this stuff is brown we can kind of see where we put it on that white perlite there so i'm not going to use this whole jug here by any means I just want to spray it on here until we can kind of see that we've coated everything nicely. So we're basically just kind of painting that perlite brown there. And that's probably pretty good there. So as we water this right now or later in the day, then some of that stuff will get down there to those roots and we can start kind of generating that good biology down there on those seedlings. And we've talked about a lot of the benefits of using this perlite on top in the past, but another benefit specific to this video is it kind of holds on to some of that fertilizer there. Since we're top watering, some of it can flush through. That perlite kind of helps it stick to it and holds on to it there so we don't lose quite as much of it through top watering. All right, so that handles our greenhouse duties for the day. Now let's go out to the garden, check on the girls, and see if they're ready for their big move. Hey, gals. Y'all ready to move? Y'all tired of eating clover? Okay. Well, I gotta wait on my help, but we'll move y'all in just a little bit, all right? So while we're waiting on my help, to put up the dogs and come out here and just kind of keep an eye on things as I'm moving them, make sure none of those chickens get out. We'll zoom out here so you can see this whole area here was planted with Balanza clover back in the fall. The chickens are at the end there, so they've grazed this two times. So they made two rounds on this plot. The second round, they did a lot more damage than the first round. Some spots look a little more bare than other spots for whatever reason. Not really sure why. Some days, I guess they were a little more hungry than other days. Or maybe the clover wasn't planted as thick in some spots and you couldn't really tell until they kind of worked it down a little bit. But here's what we've got. Over here on this side, it's a lot thicker and it'll probably still grow back a little better. Some of those bare spots in the middle, I don't know if those will grow back that well, but we shall see. So the last time we showed our chicken tractor here, we had somebody comment and say they thought there was going to be too much nitrogen here and that I was going to have some soil compaction issues. And before I reply to that, let me just say we appreciate every single comment on our videos, positive or negative we like all comments and we especially like comments that make us think now there's no doubt in my mind that this soil is probably pretty high in nitrogen right now with the chicken manure on it and this clover here which fixes a good bit of nitrogen we probably have got a really good nitrogen supply here and that's one reason why I'm going to plant corn here as opposed to anything else. If I was to plant tomatoes here, I'd probably make some massive tomato plants and not many tomatoes. So we're kind of planning this out. We knew we were going to plant corn here. That's why we did the cover crop here of the clover and let the chickens graze it. Corn has a high nitrogen demand. It should be able to take it. Now, one thing I am a little concerned about is it being too nitrogen rich and us not getting very good germination on the corn. I don't know what the thresholds are there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these chickens off of here today, move them to another spot, and I'm gonna let this clover, if it does, grow back up some. And then in another few weeks, we're gonna incorporate, we'll till it into the soil, let everything breathe a little bit, and then by the time we get ready to plant, we should get pretty decent germination. I don't think you would wanna incorporate it right now and then try to plant into it because it might be too rich. But we're gonna let it kinda of farm off a little bit, breathe a little bit, and it should be just right for corn. At least that's what I'm thinking. We will see. As far as the compaction issue goes, I could see where somebody would think moving this heavy chicken tractor around this plot here would compact this soil a little bit. But if you look at my design here, there's not a lot of the chicken tractor that's actually on the ground because of the way we built it here. So it's not pressing on the ground in a whole lot of spots. There's not a lot of surface area there that's pressing on the ground and compacting it. We also have a very dense cover crop out here, or it was dense at one point, 
lots of roots in that soil there this plot is pretty sandy and as i walk on it out here it feels really really spongy now we did have some rain last night but even before that rain it feels nice and soft and spongy so i don't think compaction is going to be an issue although i definitely see where someone might think that so thanks to whoever left that comment kind of gave us something to think about kind of got the gears and our brain turning a little bit now i'm gonna go get my help and we'll move these gals from over there over to this kale cover crop right here and what I'll probably do is just take that chicken tractor, spin it around there, and come right back through this thicker part of the clover here. It'd be easier to pull it through there, and that seems like the shortest path to get to where we need to go. All right, got my helpers here. Now we're ready to move some chickens. Let's go. Okay. So they're doing pretty good because they move along with you, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that, we want to move them like a really long ways at one time. Okay. We're going all the way across the property. I'd probably do just a little bit at the time. Okay. So don't stress them out too much. Good idea. I'm trying to get lined up here. Okay. Right there. We have Titus on loose chicken patrol. Yeah. <laughs> Titus, you making sure none of them get loose? Yeah. You're doing good. Okay, that's all. Uh, I don't think you got enough rear end to move it. <laughs> Use both feet, Titus. Step on both feet. But you ain't quite heavy enough yet. <laughs> Here, let daddy help. There we go. So do you feel like that makes a huge difference? Oh, the chick lift? Yeah. Oh. What? Makes a world of difference. I, I, I mean, because this isn't as easy as pushing a grocery cart, but without that, it would be almost, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you could build something like that yourself, but for what it costs, it's just. And it's so simple. Yeah. It's turnkey. We have an affiliate link for that in the description below as well if you decide to build a chicken tractor. But, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do this without that thing. My favorite thing to do whenever we go to a new plot is watch how happy they are. <laughs> it's like they found gold. It's so funny. Now, what is this, Travis? This is called Bayou Kale. Bayou Kale. It's a uh, kale specifically designed to be grown as a cover crop for livestock forage. Okay. You could eat it, too. We mm. could pick some and eat it, but we grew it specifically for the chicken feed. But we would have had to pick it when it was green. Not Some of it looks a little pink. Well, that's because I think there's some nutrient deficiencies in this soil here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we could pick the green leaves and eat them. Okay. All right. There you go some water. So this stuff here isn't near as thick as that Blonza clover was. With the Blonza clover, we were able to graze them twice, as I told you earlier. This stuff here might be pretty torn up after one rotation, which is fine. I think I got another spot I can put them on if that happens. But we'll just have to see how quick this recovers, if it can tolerate two grazings or maybe just one because it's not as thick. So a lot of people were Worried about these chickens not having enough calcium. Now they're not laying eggs yet, so really not an issue so far. But that Blonza clover does have a good bit of calcium in it. But for those of you that were worried about the calcium, this is how we'll be supplementing it. So this company sent us a bag of this black soldier fly larva. This is supposed to be more nutritious than your standard mealworm treats. And we've been giving them some of these guys. This has a decent amount of calcium in it. So a good little calcium supplement for them. And um, I think we do have a coupon code for this. I think it's LDF. You get 10% off. If you want to go to Grub Terra's website and get some of these black soldier fly larvae, you can go check them out. Well, we're about to give some of these chickens. <laughs> Look at them. Look at them getting so excited. Look at them. <laughs> they saw you opening that bag. All right, Tata, don't steal the bag. So we've just uh -huh. been pushing it through the fence yeah, so that way... 
They sort of all get them. <laughs> Why are them they're so happy? They're so happy. They love these things. <laughs> That's what you got them. Yeah. Look at them. I wish y'all could see clear, not through the. They tearing them up. Oh. Look at them. They are going to town. So when they were on that clover, we were putting like some extra kale and cabbage in there with them, and they wouldn't really touch it. Beets, carrots, they preferred the clover over any extra veggies we put in there. But we started giving them these things right here, and they would eat these over the clover. So they get excited about these treats here, and uh, it's just something fun to come out here and do in the afternoon and give them a little extra snack. <laughs> well, it's fun to see them so excited. Yeah. So this here is a five pound bag or 80 ounce bag. And it says on the back here that an 80 ounce bag should feed up to 25 chickens per month. Um, I don't know that we're following that. We may be giving them more than that ratio there. But the good thing about this stuff, it is sustainably produced. So they use food waste to create these black soldier fly larvae. So for every pound of these that are produced, it helps prevent 20 pounds of food waste from going into landfills and stuff. So nice little kind of environmentally safe practice here. So you're not only feeding your chickens, you're helping kind of reduce the amount of food waste out there as well. So just like on the clover, we'll be moving these guys every single day, rain or shine. With that clover, they were able to mow that down a lot in just a day. And since this stuff is not as thick, we're definitely going to have to be sure to move them every day if we've got any chance of this stuff growing back. So whenever we first started the chickens on the clover, I was worried about us stopping all the chicken food. But Travis compared the two nutrients within the clover and the chicken food. Turns out the clover was actually better for them, had more nutrients, right? Right, right. So that blonde de clover is more nutritious than most of your chicken feeds out there. It's really good stuff, it's kind of designed for grazing, but also good for the garden soil. So, uh, we have a monster here. His name is Titus. <laughs> So we haven't gave them any chicken food in a long, long time. And um, they seem to be just fine without it. They look nice and healthy. Now, if we put chicken food in there, they will go to town on it's it. It's easy. I guess it's easy for them. Right. But uh, yeah, don't worry about them. They're plenty, plenty healthy. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that on every cover crop. I would suggest that you look into the nutrient background of your cover crop before you stop all your chicken food. But for us, it's going good so far. We still don't have any eggs. Though. No eggs yet. Um, those chickens need a talking to. Yeah, I think we're like. going to go to Hobby Lobby and get some of those ceramic <laughs> eggs and put in there. Um, so they'll kind of understand what, what they do. need to be doing pretty soon. Because they haven't gotten the memo. Yet. That's right. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed the video today, getting those seedlings fertilized in the greenhouse, and an interesting discussion there on organic versus synthetic fertilizers and seedlings and transplants at least. Good thing to get the chicken tractor moved today. Yeah. Uh, wasn't that hard. I thought it might be because the soil was so wet. We had a lot of rain last night, but pulling it through that area there where the clover was still kind of a nice mat of clover kept Helped it from you. sinking down so okay. much. And uh, it only took just a few minutes to move it. Didn't yeah. really stress the chickens. And um, here we go. One more plot, yeah. getting some nice fertilizer <laughs> on it. So what you got coming up? Uh, coming up on videos, uh, we got to put a tarp back on that plot. We put the alfalfa pellets on. I want to talk a little bit more on an upcoming video about the different carrot varieties that we grew, okay. which ones we really like, which ones are just kind of eh, okay. Yeah. We got to plan out our garden, kind of map out where we're going to put everything. Right. So we'll have a lot of exciting things coming up. And we got to start cutting up our taters because it's going to be tater Ooh. time. If y'all don't long. know, Travis is such a romantic man. And for Valentine's Day, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. She loves it. <laughs> She loves it. She loves it. I can't wait. She did. She says, honey, don't Please, go buy don't me. don't buy me anything. Don't go buy me any jewelry flowers, or roses or anything. Nothing. Just let me plant taters. I cannot wait. Listen, I'll take it. It'll be fun. <laughs> so some of the products we mentioned in today's video, we do have affiliate links in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. And we have some coupon codes for those affiliates. So make sure you go check those out. Go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com. Lots of good recipes, our garden journal there, and some Lazy Dog Farm merch. Yep. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Bye. Oh.